okay if we begin uh, uh, the afternoon uh, panel uh, continuing on this question of uh, how we bring the uh, cooperation and uh, develop partnership between Europe and uh, China around the Belt and Road. Uh, the panel, the afternoon panel will begin with uh, my colleague, Mr. Uh, Ulf Sandmark, uh, who is also the chairman of the Belt and Road Institute in Sweden. Uh, and he is going to be speaking on uh, a topic sh which should be a bit uh, more clear uh, after the presentation in the morning of Mr. Askari on the, a new deal for Northern Europe, a new deal obviously referencing to the uh, ideas of Franklin Roosevelt, the American president uh, during and before the Second World War. So uh, I will turn it over now to uh, to Mr. Sandmark, and uh, uh, we will uh, begin. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I now share my screen here, so as you can see. So I will not see you anymore. <laughs> so yeah, we see. here we go. Okay. So uh, thank you so much for for. Uh, uh organizing this uh, uh, webinar steve and and uh, and uh, your excellencies and and um, and the participants i'm very happy to to have this opportunity to present the the chances we have the the opportunity is actually now when there is a crisis uh, never lose a good crisis people in the chinese say so this is uh, something we should not uh, uh, lose in this time either and actually the a new nordic new deal is a policy that could be an opening for unlocking a lot of these uh, problems we have now but uh, first i want to go back to the to the uh, reason why we why we need a new deal especially now and and the purpose of of, of, of the economy because we have uh, 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 a corona crisis that is not ending in sweden people are kind of winding up the the whole crisis and think it's over in many parts of europe but it's actually accelerating and it's getting much worse in countries like mexico brazil and south africa and uh, not to speak about the war con con nations like yemen and, and syria where it's it's where they are under blockade so they're not even allowed to to import the the necessary protection gear and and equipment but um, to 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 come over this situation we need to uh, develop uh, uh, the health system to to uh, and this is a policy promoted by the uh, president c called the health <laughs> silk road and this policy is uh, something that we need to uh, put in full gear now to to build the, the hospitals actually if uh, 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 there is a study done by the Schiller institute about how much uh, we we would need if we would have a, a standard of, of of united states standard for 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 uh, hospitals we would need to have uh, 18.6 million more hospital belts in the world and we need to to uh, and this is like 35000 more hospitals and for ventilators there is uh, today in the united states 150000 in germany 25000 in india 20000 in liberia it was none in, in, in the beginning of this crisis the world with us standards would need 4 million ventilators i mean there is no reason to to stop working. We we have uh, and to be out of work. We have to have a big big uh, uh, mobilization to to make this possible. Actually, the president of Ghana has called for building uh, uh, hundred and uh, four. I think it was. Uh, uh, 
new hospitals in Ghana. And this is something we should provide. It was, uh, uh, it was 94. It was 88 uh, district hospitals and six regional hospitals. These hospitals are, are not there now. So, so what should be now uh, uh, supported this nation that has this now commitment to build it, we should build these hospitals. And that should be an, a, a purpose, uh, a, a target of building basically one hospital a week at least. I mean, even for nations like Sweden should help to build these hospitals at least one a month in, in, in these nations that are now without any hospitals. And this is, uh, in, in this way, we can put our people to full, full work and we can put our machine tool industry and, and uh, uh, medical equipment industry to full work. And we have also uh, all the other things you need for this. But to have a good health system, the, the, cri the critical thing is infrastructure. And, uh, and therefore our policy to, to for, for the uh, development, the Belt and Road policy for uh, developing the infrastructure of the world is in the center of, of, a, of a health silk road. And we need to develop this infrastructure to make a good health system functionable because it's not possible to have hospitals and health systems without roads, without water, without electricity. And, uh, and uh, this is something we need to start immediately. And this means that there is uh, a need for full mobilization and this is uh, why we need a nordic new deal because we need to uh, be able to produce this thing we have to gear up our production we have to gear up our labor force we have to gear up the, the science and technology development to be able to to uh, achieve these targets so I, go, I will go into these different parts in my presentation and I will start with that there is actually now taking uh, initiatives in Scandinavia, in, in the Nordic countries, for uh, going in the direction of a new deal. And I would especially point to Denmark because Denmark took the decision uh, to build the, the uh, Feynman Belt Bridge tunnel. This tunnel will be connected uh, uh, the islands of Denmark with Germany, this Rødby put garden, and uh, uh, this is a very big project. It's the biggest in Europe actually by now. That is really starting, and this project will uh, uh, need to uh, have a whole factory for producing tunnel elements, and this is about to be started immediately the construction of this tunnel element factory. Also, this decision is very bold from the Danish government to, to push this because the, the German side has not fully approved the, 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 the tunnel project. The, it is approved in higher courts, but not in, in the finally in the lower court. So this means that we have a situation where Denmark is building this in spite of, of of this resistance from from Germany, and uh, and uh, they are actually paying the whole project themselves, uh, and will just land it on, on the G German side. So in this way, G Denmark is taking a lead now, just what, what like they did with by the building of the Great Bed Bridge, and in this way they started to connect uh, uh, Scandinavia with with, with uh, uh, the continent. And this was very important because with the help of that, they could then move on and push Sweden to, to build the earth, to have the Öresund bridge built in, in the joint cooperation with, with Denmark and Sweden. So Denmark is taking this lead now and we should follow that lead because this is, is uh, something that should be done. Uh, in, in, in many parts. As you see, it's a, it's a tunnel where, where you put the elements under the bottom of the sea and then you fill it up 
so it cannot be uh, disturbed and it will be uh, both for road and for rail and you see there the the, the, the construction uh, uh, the site in red uh, as it's as it's uh, presented there where there is now a harbor for for the ferry boats what 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 we will have is then a, such a, a tunnel ready by 2028 and this means that we are in a very short time to start the projects to connect with that in 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 the rest of scandinavia so it's a very important initiative for the whole of scandinavia but uh, uh, there are also other projects i would we actually have a situation in in finland where, where the the um, where the uh, 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 project to, to, to build a Helsinki tunnel project is also uh, on the move. It's actually ready to, to start. It was about to, to, be, to start in January this year, but uh, this tunnel um, has not started yet. There is uh, still discussions uh, and it's an unclear reasons. Uh, why it's not starting, but it's fully funded fr from, uh, and it's also uh, the, the equipment to build it is also uh, uh, contracted and our tunneling friends fr from, from, uh, from, from NACA uh, in Sweden, they, they, they are also involved in this tunnel project. So what we'll, we will have is two uh, uh, T tunnel, uh, uh, two tunnels beside each other, and it is it's about to build in a Chinese style. It will it will also improve the whole technology of, of building infrastructure in in Scandinavia because because they will take a, a lead on building it in a fast way. The 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 idea is build it with sixteen uh, boring machines. And these 16 boring machines would start build, uh, be, uh, from different places uh, uh, boring this tunnel. Both in both ends, you have two, two boring machines each. And then on three places in the middle, you will go down like a, a, an island in the middle of, of the, the Finnish Bay. You will, you will see, uh, you will bring two, four boring machines digging. Uh, on on the in both directions the two the two tunnels uh, and and in this way they, it goes up to to sixteen boring machines so it, the tunneling can be ready in two and a half years and then the whole uh, the whole tunnel f uh, will be uh, op be opened in 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 four years so this is a very very big project and and it's very important because it's making a a, a metro area out of the two capitals Helsinki and Tallinn it, it it's also a, a huge uh, a project for 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 uh, for uh, uh, construction but uh, especially important is that it's connecting the 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 uh, uh, whole region uh, as we see here that the tunnel it will be like six uh, Öresund bridges or, or connections. So, so this is uh, the longest tunnel in the world they will build there. And, and this will be a, a project for about 15 billion, billion euros. And it will bring uh, 31,000 people into work immediately, but it will have much more implications because of the effects of infrastructure. I just point to the picture on the, on the right hand side here, where you see it will connect uh, the, the cities, uh, Helsinki and Tallinn, but then also with the Rail Baltica to, to, to Europe. It will connect to the uh, 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 European uh, 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 projects and corridors. And, and in this way, uh, we, we will have uh, a, a new situation for Finland, where it's not e more like a, 
an island anymore. Most of the transports and exports goes by 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 sea. Now they can be uh, bring the uh, the products and exports to the continent by 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 rail. But what is also interesting in this picture is that they are seeing this as a project for both south, southern the link between uh, the, connecting the whole southern Finland east west to St. Petersburg and also to Stockholm. They are eyeing the possibility to link up also Stockholm over the, under the the the, uh, the, 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 the 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 Baltic Sea. Just next picture here, you will see. You will see that this project on the Helsinki side will look like this. It's a huge uh, real estate project also because we'll open new land, and this will make it uh, in, in the big, uh, big project. On the same time, it will be on on the Helsinki on the Tallinn side also huge uh, constructions for housing. So in this way, we have one of the biggest projects for the whole of the Nordic countries about to start and it should be encouraged absolutely because this is what we need now to to put uh, the, the infrastructure in shape in in the, in the nordic countries to be able to raise the productivity and, and have this uh, new market of the twin cities actually we have the big city of st petersburg quite close so it will also benefit from from this uh, this uh, huge uh, tunnel project. But if you look to the, the, the discussion we had just before, uh, the, the pause here with, with our friend from Kirkenes, you can see that the tunnel project is linking up to the Arctic Railway also. He was speaking about connecting Kirkenes, and this project is to build a railway from the northernmost. Uh, railway station in Finland, in Rovaniemi, up to Kirkenes. And this Arctic railway would connect up to the North Sea route. And this will make a, a, a connection right through uh, the whole Finland and with the tunnel and then with the uh, Baltic uh, uh, rail into the 10 T corridors all the way down to Southern Europe which then will be linked to the Arctic and to the Northern Sea Route. So these projects, both the tunnel project and the Arctic Railways is a project promoted by, the, uh, by, uh, by Westerbacca and the, and the group behind this tunnel project in Helsinki, Tallinn. They are very active to promote also this Arctic Railway. So, uh, uh, and as, as our friend said, Kirkenes is the first stop by the boats coming on the North Sea route from China and, and through the ice areas. It means that the boats uh, you, you can use in this place is specially constructed boats for going in the ice. They are very expensive to br bring down all the way around Norway down to Rotterdam or Tallinn. Therefore, it's uh, very important to, to uh, unload the, the, the the cargo in Kirkenes and put it on rail down to to to, to Europe, or uh, to uh, maybe even reload the, the 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 ships to 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 send them on uh, for further harbors. Anyway, what we have here is um, not only the connection to to Europe, but we have also a very important development project for the for the Nordic countries. This, this Botnian corridor would in this be, be, way be connected to the Arctic project. This is very exciting projects in, in, in the Arctic to develop oil and gas and resources and other raw material resources. And it's very exciting situation for the whole industry. We have a heavy industry in the northern part of, of the Baltic Sea, in, in North Sweden and in North Finland. These could now be connected to the Arctic, to the Barents Sea project, and to to the whole North, North Sea route, where there are lots and lots of projects <coughs> in, in 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 Russia, far into Russia, where you can go up the rivers and into the uh, uh, railways, uh, into uh, 
basically you can go all the way from North Sea Road down to Kazakhstan so through, 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 through the rivers. So this is a huge area of development and projects for the industry in Northern Sweden, Northern, Northern Finland that can be connected up to Kirkenes. So this is not only raw material project for, for development of, of the North of, of, of Finland and, and Sweden, it's also a big, big in, uh, development project for, for industry, industrial development. And actually for all those uh, industries along the corridors. And actually it's not only a Finnish corridor, it's actually, we have a big uh, corridor, you can say, the whole of Sweden is a kind of development corridor uh, along the coast uh, in the north, down to Sweden and down to Denmark. We should have a similar kind of concept like they have here in this picture for the, for the Swedish-Danish corridor down to the continent and connecting to the Arctic. So this is a very important concept that our friend uh, uh, brought up here in, in this, uh, 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 in the beginning. What we see here is that uh, if you take a look at the world from our side, from the north, you can see that the, the Northern Silk Road is actually a shortcut. And actually the whole Belt and Road is also a shortcut for connections between um, Europe and China. And if you look in this way, you see that Scandinavia is actually uh, quite the closest to, to, to China. It's the first European, uh, West European uh, country is Finland that is uh, connected to the Silk Road. So, so in this way, we could have a situation where we uh, use the, the, the uh, can form a kind of a cooperation among the nations that are kind of Nordic nations. And this includes not only the Nordic countries here, but also Russia has this kind of tendency. Also Northern China, uh, Japan, South Korea, we are all Northerners. We like to work, we like to, to develop. And there is a kind of uh, friendship among these kind of nations that can be developed very much if we develop the Belt and Road, uh, especially for the Nordic countries. And if you see there, the, 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 the picture to the right here, this is the uh, advertisement from Finnair that shows that if you go on the great circles, the closest way uh, uh, around the globe, you see that uh, their airport, Vanta, outside Helsinki, is directly on the road to uh, Paris, to, to Portugal, and others. If, if you go uh, to, 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 uh, to Frankfurt, to, to go to China, you would then fly back over, over basically Finland to, to get to China and to Japan. So the best way to, to connect to China uh, is to uh, go over Finland. And in this way, we, we can connect the short, have a shortcut to, to, to Asia. Just, uh, uh, we have, yeah, so, and then we have here is the Mr. Uh, maybe have, we have Mikael here on, on the on the as participant. Uh, he he is Mr. Railgate for for connecting uh, China with with the Nordic countries. He has to be together with the Kuvula Innovation Center developed this idea of uh, having a a corridor developed up from Xi'an in China to Kuvula with, with trains going there and uh, uh, for cargo, cargo trains. And this is then connected up to Haparanda in Sweden and then further on on, on the uh, iron ore uh, railway to Narvik. And actually this is a new possibility and if you saw that picture before, from Narvik, you can go over the sea uh, to, to North, North America. You can make it into an intermodal transport corridor. 
So in that way, Narvik is now building a new harbor uh, thereabout. So we need to build the, the, the Swedish side of this uh, railway so this can open up uh, as a corridor. So he has this railway, rail gate uh, Sweden to Haparanda, he has rail gate Norway to Narvik and rail gate Finland to Kuvula. And the idea is to also connect it to southern Norway, southern Sweden. And in this way, we have the, the existing railway connection between uh, Russia and China is actually over Haparanda, even though you have to change the gorge there in Haparanda. And this is a project we come back. But if you look to this possibility uh, to, to connect with, with, with China over Scandinavia, Scandinavia can be a bridge for the world. And, and we have the so-called Nordic Triangle. That is the idea of developing the infrastructure between Helsinki, Stockholm, Oslo, and, and Copenhagen. This is a, a European Union, uh, trans-European network uh, project. And this is uh, promoted in that way. And if we can develop this, we can have a, a, a road from, a shortcut from China through Helsinki and over the, over the, uh, or under the uh, island of Åland with a tunnel connecting to, to, to Stockholm, to, to, to Copenhagen and also to Oslo. And in this way, the whole southern part of, of um, Finland, the whole southern part of Sweden, the southern part of uh, the, the Denmark would be part of an infrastructure development corridor from China to Central Europe, to, 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 to uh, Hamburg, down to Paris, to, to, to the Iberian uh, Peninsula. So we have a, a great opportunity to connect with these industrial countries. And th this is something I think uh, uh, Alf will speak more about, and, and this is his picture. And, and this is the, 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 the third big project, you can say, for, for developing the, the uh, Nordic countries is to have a high speed rail. And I, I leave it at that because this is um, uh, something Alf will speak about, I think. So, but what we have now to sum it up, we have the corridors here. Uh, let's see here, we can get. First, we have this uh, rail gate Sweden to, to Haparanda, Norwich, And this is, uh, uh, we need a new, uh, to expand the railway for the iron ore. It's totally full of iron. So it, they, they can't uh, have any other cargo there. We need to have a double track there. And then Norway can build the, the harbor. So this is very important that Sweden support it. Then we have this cross connection to the, to the stroke it. And this, I think our friends uh, from, from, from Sturiman, Ulf, and uh, we will speak about. Uh, so, 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 so I will also lead, lead, leave that a bit. Uh, here, there's also the next uh, big harbor on the Norwegian side, Trondheim, that mm -hmm. could be connected over Umeå, which is now building a, a, a new ferry boat and, and building a cargo corridor on the east west connections. Then we have the Nordic Triangle, which I explained. Uh, then we have the Femen Belt connection, which I explained also. But what we see there is that we need to have immediately starting uh, the construction and plan for, for uh, horizon tunnels. Maybe not just one tunnel, we, could, we, could, we would need maybe more. Okay, for, for, because when this uh, Femen Belt connection will be open, the, the Horizon Bridge will be uh, congested and full <laughs> of traffic. We would need, especially for cargo transport, uh, a new connection. Uh, and there are uh, several proposals for that. And especially this uh, in Landskrona is, is uh, one of those uh, connections, but also maybe uh, a regional tunnel for, for, for railway, a regional railway in uh, Helsingør, Helsingborg, and also the, the uh, uh, tunnels for, for, for uh, uh, 
tra uh, car traffic for for road then 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 we have the whole uh, nordic countries are like from a trans is the the, the uh, main harbor for for the the export of, of scandinavia uh, especially sweden and norway but also for um, uh, uh, it, it is also a, a harbor that needs to be developed it, it's the old harbor where where uh, we had the east india company uh, going to china and we have a very good connection with China from Gothenburg uh, and cooperation. Uh, we have also the Baltic Sea is also like a big corridor and we have all the harbors on the on the both sides of, uh, of all the sides of the Baltic Sea that should be developed and in, bring in because each of these uh, cities uh, harbors on the other side of the Baltic Sea they have connections to China with Silk Road uh, uh, pro, uh, uh, corridors from from Tallinn, from Riga, from 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 Klaipeda, from 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 Poland, and so on. So if we if you uh, then we have the old Swedish North Mr. South. Mr. Sandmark, I just want to mention the time because the uh, the next speakers will have yeah. to leave by two, so they need to come in quite okay. quickly. Sorry. Okay. But anyway. Uh, the thing is that all these projects is in Sweden for 140 billion crowns and they are planning to build them until uh, 2050. So if we, in this situation we, we, we will need to, to, to develop this, uh, 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 to bring up the money, it is put forward now in this situation, we could actually put forward all, all these projects at the same time. I just want to mention the, the uh, need to develop the, the youth for, for this. And, and there we need to put the innovation in the center because this is the way to, to, to be able to push forward this. And innovation, we, we have seen uh, what is innovation, what is leapfrogging. This is what we see what China is doing and what could be done in Africa. If, if we build a fully tech, uh, infrastructure, we can have a full industrialization. And if you look to the Chinese high-speed network, this is creating a new platform of, of, of development. And this is uh, uh, the new platform that gives a new higher productivity. This is what makes it possible to have this high productivity you see. I just want to conclude with, with uh, uh, what we can do with European Union. I mean, we, are pos we have a big development area. And what we can see is that the European Union had a trans-European network. And if you look at that old plan, it had uh, the, the Nordic country was almost non-existing in, in this plan. Only with the Nordic cooperation, you can see to the right that in the, we have now a new 10 plan where the Nordic countries are uh, much more integrated. The whole Botnian corridor is there. And this was possible only when the Nordic countries worked together to push this through. So what we need now is a summit of the Nordic countries to bring together a discussion about how to uh, uh, initiate these projects and especially initiate them as a cross-border uh, projects because then we can move uh, on top of all these bureaucrats and others who have been blocking the development, we can also have the political side set, set their shoulder to, to starting these projects. So, so this is uh, uh, what I think we should work to achieve, to have a summit of the, of the uh, leaders of, of the Nordic countries. So um, we have this report, which you can go back to and look more about the Belt and Road so thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sandmark, for uh, for your presentation. That uh, clearly shows that uh, there's no shortage of work. Uh, you might want to close your yes, share. Yes, yes. Uh, 
there's no shortage of work if we decide to put our uh, uh, ourselves to uh, to do it. And uh, I would like to now introduce uh, <clears throat> our other speakers, Mr. Ulf Anderson and uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Daniel Runberg, who is uh, speaking on infrastructure in the north of Sweden uh, and is the uh, head of the INAB uh, infrastructure in Umeå. So uh, the word is yours, Mr. Runberg and Mr. Uh, Anderson. Please, you're welcome. Thank you, Stephen. Hello, everyone, your excellencies. I'd like to thank uh, Stephen especially for your invitation. It's very nice to be part of this. And I would like to thank the other speakers for their very interesting presentations. Uh, my name is Daniel Rundberg and I work with uh, developing logistics at our sites up here in the north of, north of Sweden, especially by rail and sea. And uh, today I'm going to cooperate with Ulf Andersson with this presentation. Do you want to present yourself first? Ulf? Yes, my name is Ulf Andersson and I work as a logistic consultant with uh, logistic and transport knowledge worldwide. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen now. Do you see the presentation or do you see a big ship? Yeah, we saw the ship. Now we see the logistics in northern Sweden. Okay, like good, good, good. <clears throat> well, uh, we are going to talk about the logistic developments and, and challenges we meet in the north of Sweden. And because both Ulf and I live and work in the area of Umeå, we're going to use the sites in our region as examples in these presentations. Although I think uh, the goals and challenges we meet are the same, and are shared by the cities along the, the, the Botnia, or the east coast in Sweden. See, the city of Ume has about 90,000 inhabitants and are growing fast, almost uh, 2,000 people per year. And what we're seeing right now is that uh, companies that are very energy consuming are looking at the north of Sweden for, to place their factories there because we have the cheap electricity and so on. So we are pretty sure that we're going to have much more uh, transportation than we see right now. And uh, for our industry up here, it's very important to have a good stable connection to, to China. And because of that, the Belt and Road Initiative are of the highest importance for us. And we think uh, our city Umeå has a very good strategic position in Sweden. And we are good connections in, in, in all directions. And uh, in Sweden, we are working hard with combining the different types of, of transportation of goods, both rail and, and uh, sea and road, of course. In both directions, south and north, we have the we have rail and European standard roads. And as uh, Mr. Ulf Sandberg said, we're going to build a new uh, high-speed railway from Umeå up to Luleå. So there'll be two alternatives for uh, transportation on rail, both north and, and southbound. And to the west, we have railway that connects the Atlantic to us. And to the east, we have the, the ferry to, to Vasa. We have uh, rail out to the harbor so that we can uh, can have seamless trans, what do you call it? You can have seamless 
changes from mm. rail, rail to sea. And I, I can't help to notice that this connection is not on, on BRICS maps. <laughs> Maybe it should be. Uh, in, in one year, we have uh, the double the capacity on the ferry, so it's a very important link. Actually, well, I put it there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Great news. Yes, that's <laughs> very important for us. And, and, I wrote, uh, and I wrote a long article. <laughs> nice to hear. Nice to hear. Uh, Ulf is going to talk more about the ferry. <laughs> And uh, just a little problem for us is that Finland has not yet developed their intermodal rail very much, but I think that that is coming and I, I think it will be a must when uh, the rail Baltica project will be finished with the tunnel between Tallinn and Helsinki. We have the intermodal train terminal in Umeå, which was, which was completed. 2010, it handles both the intermodal trains and conventional cargo, about 1 million ton per year, 50,000 TEUs. And uh, of course, we have connection from this terminal out to the harbor as well. We have pretty good uh, developed shuttle traffic with intermodal trains in the north of Sweden going south and the other way around, of course. We transport very much this way. And we also have uh, access to Green Cargo's intermodal network from Umeå and Luleå. Uh, what we like is we, we do not yet ha have a real stable connection to China. <clears throat> we were trying to to uh, to make some connection from Vasa to Kovola to to make the train connection to to China that way, but but it's it's very difficult in Finland, as I said before, to 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 find a real. Uh, business opportunities because we, they only have one train operator at this time. I think that's going to resolve itself, but right now it's very difficult. It would be perfect for us to, to have to have an intermodal terminal on the Finnish side and, and then put on train to, if it's Kovola, it's going to be the link or it's Helsinki, I don't know, but somewhere we can get a stable connection to China by train. It's very in demand from our industries up here, especially the forest industries. The harbor, uh, it's going to be re rebuilt in the next five years. Ulf will talk more about that later. But we have uh, the intermodal train terminal on site. Uh, we have a very modest traffic today, but we are trying to, or, or we are going to have to develop the, the um, container and the rural ship uh, traffic in the Baltic, because we have demands from our, our government to, to uh, change from the rubber wheels on the roads to rail and the sea. And the rail are go, soon going to be filled up to the max. So we need the, the, the sea to transport our goods. But it's something we're, we're working on. I think all the cities on, on Swedish east coast in the north, in the whole country. Well, that was my last picture. Ulf. Uh, Don, Don, I think you can continue with the presentation. If you just change, I, I'll let you know when you change. Uh, between Sweden and Finland, we have a ferry since back in the 30s. Um, from the beginning, it was just a passenger ferry. Uh, but due to the increasing uh, number of departures, uh, all of a sudden, the transportation industry also found out that we can we can transport some cargo on this ship as well. 
when the port was moved from upstream Umeå River down to Hormsund, uh, they also started to accept trailers and, and loose cargo. So since then the traffic has increased and at this point uh, we have uh, 16 departures per week uh, providing uh, general cargo, mostly on trailers, some containers. Uh, but due to this increasing traffic, we have also um, bought a new ferry that should be delivered in 2021, within a year. Uh, it's a new environmental friendly ferry uh, due to the demands from the customers, driven by LNG, liquid natural gas, and uh, electricity power within the port. Uh, and this fare will increase the capacity from 1150 load meters up to 1500. Uh, one of the reasons is the increasing number of traffic from Russia and from former Russia countries. And that uh, will be a great uh, adding to the transport capacity on the road to China as well. This ferry will also uh, handle all kinds of units, uh, containers, trailers, cassettes, and mafia wagons. So it will be a, a ferry who can accept almost anything. And it, it tends that the traffic from the, from the transportation companies is more and more handled by trailers and containers for multimodal reasons. Next. And then we have a terminal in Storuman. Storuman is situated right between Umeå in Sweden and uh, Moirana in Norway. It's an intermodal hub which connects um, train traffic from Umeå up to Storuman. And then we have the inland span which goes along the Norwegian coast down, down to southern Sweden. Uh, the terminal was built back in 2009, I think, with three production tracks. We have a great list lifting capacity for intermodal car cargo units, timber, uh, indoor outdoor warehousing with good capacity. And it also connects the Atlantic to the Far East through the Baltic Sea, as uh, Mr. Sandmark told us early, earlier. And this is a great connection also to, to Iceland because they have um, uh, transports from, from uh, Mursan to Reykjavik. And the, tr the traffic today is produced by three rail operators from, from Storuman. Storuman to southern Sweden and Storuman to the coast Umeå. Next. What's in the future? Due to the increasing uh, volumes of cargo, I was referring, <laughs> I think I refer back to Yui Nagashima's presentation. It's, it's all about the transport when it comes to international business. Somehow you need to connect the seller with the buyer and the, the cargos has to be transported between the two. For this reason, the, the, the Storuman hub has um, uh, started to build a triangle track so they can have a faster passing through Storuman. Uh, Ume Harbor is, ra is right now in a rebuild move and um, for 1.4 billion Swedish crowns. We'll make a new uh, terminal for containers will do some new warehousing and a new terminal for general cargo. Uh, this combines very great with the building of the North Botnia line. It's a 270 kilometer track from Lugo down to Umeå for goods and passengers. And this also connects the, the cities along the Sweden seas coast in a very good way. <laughs> because uh, it's all up to speed up the transit times. And 
right now we're in the project Nordic, Nordic Intermodal Short Sea. And that project is mainly to attract container shipping companies uh, to put their containers from northern Sweden through the port of Umeå to Asia via the Baltic Sea. And the great access to this is also uh, due in the history of um, international business. Most sea traffic to and from China has been through Gothenburg, Mediterranean Sea and so on. But th this will give uh, sellers and buyers a new transport mood through the Belt and Road Initiative. And I think that will also attract new business to new business areas, which has before been unknown to at least Swedish sellers and buyers as well. And uh, we're also working on building a train terminal in Dova, and that's a biofuel and recycling area uh, for about 7 million square meters for establishment. Next. Yeah. Next. So how does this logistic network in Northern Sweden works? We have a Swedish national freight transport strategy and that's included with the European freight transport strategy. And I think to as some of the earlier participants have said, the key is cooperation. Um, we are looking uh, to see more traffic on ship along our east coast due to environmental reason. Uh, one of the main transport products has been forest products in a way for years, actually for, for a number of years, for centuries. Uh, but we are seeing more and more businesses uh, starting up in Sweden as well as in China and that increased a lot and now we also need to stand up to get the new uh, attractive transportation uh, both logistically and economically and environmentally friendly so they can continue with that. Uh, we want to build a sta stable connection to Asia or actually to and from Asia. Asia is a very uh, important um, area for for Sweden and as we look at it uh, if we need if we want to have better opportunities for our for our customers then we also need to stay focused on building a new attractive transportation road and that's why I think this Belt and Road initiative is excellent and we have also over the years worked strategically uh, with the low to locate intermodal hubs throughout the region and that is to connect different transportation modes with each other to provide a good transport service to the to our customers next oh thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you everyone <laughs> any questions you can mail me or daniel Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Daniel and Ulf. I, I don't know if you'll be able to stay with us at all, uh, or if you have other obligations which you will have to uh, to go to. But I do I, want. I to... will. I will be out for an hour. I will be back. I'll promise. <laughs> okay, that's good. <laughs> uh, the The main thing is what you put your your finger on. Two things is. Connectivity, obviously, we have spoken about, but you also identified the future. And the problem is uh, too many people, I believe, in the bureaucracy, uh, especially in Stockholm, do not understand this concept that the future is connecting to China. And that's the markets, the biggest market in, at this point with the biggest population in the world. And the, the north of Scandinavia is right in the center of that transport corridor. So if somebody understood a future orientation, which unfortunately too few do, but 
beyond this webinar, I hope you and Daniel will be working with me and others to get across that message because there is unfortunately too many people uh, who sit in Stockholm and don't, they think there's an outpost out there which has no uh, significance. And uh, when, uh, when uh, my colleague Ol Sandmark and I were off in Waleftio, uh, I experienced that directly, that uh, uh, people there understand that they are important and they can contribute to the future as uh, uh, <clears throat> the mayor from uh, Kirkenes uh, explained in the beginning as well. So this connects Sweden to Russia, some people have a problem with that, but we don't, uh, also to China. Uh, and that's the way we build cooperation and peace, not uh, suspicion and conflict. So thank you very much for your input. We look forward to working yeah. with you more and I hope you will be back after you have to take a break now for other, Daniel, will you stay with us or are you also? Yes, uh, no, I can stay a while. Uh, I'm not going uh, till uh, three, so. Okay, great. Uh, the next speaker uh, who I want to present is uh, Ulf mentioned. He is uh, Mr. Alf Johansson. Johansson, uh, he is uh, Norwegian. He has uh, worked very hard as the, uh, the uh, head of the uh if i get it correctly here uh the uh, uh the uh, secretary general of uh verland uh, earthfold border council uh and he will speak on trans nordic high speed railways going from bergen to st petersburg uh, in five hours. That's the title of his presentation, and I welcome you, Mr. Johansson, for uh, giving us uh, some of your uh, your ideas and your presentation. You're welcome. Uh, thank you, Stephen. Uh, can you all hear me? Yes, we hear you, and you can uh, share your uh, screen when you're ready. Okay. First of all, thank you, Stephen and uh, Ulf, for your uh, uh, invitation to this. And uh, uh, by the way, I, I try to take off this. Can you still hear me? Yeah, we still hear you. Yeah, it's better without it because I couldn't hear my own voice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, okay, uh, I will share uh, the screen. See, if I manage, you don't see my screen. No. Yes. Yeah, we see it. Okay. So now you see it. Well, uh, first of all, I have to say thank you very much to the other speakers. I think uh, there was a lot of um, very good uh, presentations today. And uh, it's nice to see that so many uh, people in uh, Europe and all the way from China are uh, engaged in these big questions about how to build the common future, the, the global, uh, the global uh, uh, paradigm uh, shift that is actually ongoing. Um, I have been working uh, with European Union projects for uh, 30 years. Uh, the last project was named uh, Tentacle, and uh, it was funded by the European Union and um, also partly uh, in cooperation with the Nordic uh, Ministry uh, uh, and the Nordic uh, Council. Uh, and we have been working on visions more or less for the last years to to look at it, how it could be feasible to establish high-speed railway network in the nordic region and uh, i will share some 
visions with you and also some uh, some uh, other aspects uh, to start with we have many problems with the railways in the nordic region there are like this uh, cargo and places there shouldn't be and there are uh, not cargo where it should be and uh, and the passenger traffic uh, moves slowly etc etc i will show more uh, this is a typical railway constructed in 1896 most of the railways were constructed between 1850 and 1910 uh, and uh, they are just maintained and and uh, uh, been uh, maybe some up, up, upgrade but nothing really big change since this period of time so this is the main railroad between Oslo and Gothenburg, Copenhagen. Uh, a distance on uh, less than 30 kilometers by car it takes four hours with the, um, no, I mean 300 kilometers by car, takes uh, four hours with train. Uh, and one other problem is that uh, we have, we're using uh, ballistic uh, railways in the Nordic region. There are almost zero meter of slab tracks. There are some very few tunnels with some slab tracks, but, uh, but uh, very, very few. So, it, and it creates a lot of problems with sun buckles, etc., and maintenance problems. And it's difficult and very uncomfortable to drive fast with trains. Major parts, as I said, are old railways. We have slow railways, mostly below 130 kilometers per hour, and uh, none faster than 220. Uh, technical failures all the time, many bottlenecks, like uh, small stations where you have to wait until one train has, has left the station before you can come in. Poor cross-border connections between the country borders, we have a heavy flight traffic on short and medium range distances. There are no clear government ideas or visions or even plans, absolutely no plans about the Nordic railway infrastructure. Uh, we have brought it up with the government several times, but they more or less refused to talk about it. They say it's unrealistic to to, to have a synchronized planning system. The Nordic Council doesn't agree on that, but uh, uh, the government uh, ministries are, uh, are stuck, so to say. Uh, very expensive construction of railways, three, four times more, more costs uh, than at the European average. There's a lack of capacity for freight and also some missing railway links, which uh, should obviously be built many years ago. Um, there are a lot of good reasons for establishing high-speed railways. I don't have to go into all of it, but like climate for once is a uh, very important. Railways is uh, electric railways or hydrogen railways are, are emission almost zero. Uh, energy uh, efficiency of course uh, also the comfort comfortable uh, i would say comfortable travels uh, is important to mention productivity economic growth new jobs peace and cooperation has been named before integration of the northern regions and its affordable travels and last maybe the most important we should build high speed railways because it's possible this is like going to the moon because we can maybe, but uh, or or whatever. But but this is possible. We can really do it now. And it's old ideas, but now we can put it into a new global context, a new new paradigm. Uh, and it's important to think more than only Finland and Russia, because uh, I know there is a lot of there are a lot of plans between Finland and Russia, Finland and, and Estonia. Baltic, but we have to integrate Sweden and Norway and Denmark also into this. Um, well, five hours Bergen, St. Petersburg, is it a bad joke or 
is it a, a spicy vision? Is it is it a, is it possible? It would cost forty five to fifty billion euro, uh, and only the Oslo Stockholm part would cost twelve to fourteen billion euro. It's not, uh, let's say, it's, it's big sums, but it's not like extreme. I mean, it's, it's, uh, and we have many countries to share this. Uh, so, how to do it? Uh, well, we could also think seven hours Bergen, Moscow. There are approximately 36 million, if you include Moscow, 18 million without Moscow uh on this uh, line so within five hours 18 million you add two more hours you have another many on the south of this axis and on, on the north of the axis so if we have a trans nordic line uh, many can can connect to it it will be like the main connection to China, in fact. And the average train speed should be approximately 300 kilometers per hour, which is now it's not even very high. It's, uh, it's uh, normal in China, it's, uh, it's uh, standard already. Um, but we need to put a bigger puzzle, as I mentioned, where with the, we, we have to connect all the big cities and even smaller towns and uh, harbors and uh, airports, etc., to in order to make the green mobility shift possible. And this uh, already was uh, shown by uh, Ulf. Uh, the, this is not a detailed system; it's more the principle thinking. Uh, but uh, we have to connect uh, to build out the system in the Nordic region because we can and we have the money and we have the capacity to do it especially if we can have some help, maybe from China or other places. Um, and we will connect the Nordic region to other parts of the world. Even the no very uh, northern part, like in Kirkenes, Murmansk, but also uh, all over the Nordic territory. We have to, to use the whole Nordic territory. So between Bergen and Oslo, it's... Um, Today you can go by train, it takes six and a half up to eight hours. With a high speed train, you could use between one hour and 15 to 130. Then four million, there are four million passengers uh, travels by, by plane between the west coast of Norway and the Oslo region. And that's pretty much, it's, it's 11,000 per day. 11,000 passengers per day. Uh, within the center of Scandinavia, uh, we can call it the small triangle, there are 12 million people and 8 million passenger air travels between these um, um, uh, airports in this area. Very short travels. Uh, they could easily be, be been, uh, shifted to, to railways. We have worked on uh, a comprehensive model for the, this small triangle and um, looked at how uh, old structures can be combined with new structures. Uh, but we see the old structures, is the black lines here, how they are too, too long to be efficient and, and uh, also not comfortable and not, not fast. So we have to make a totally new system. Um, and one uh, principal idea is that you have to drive the trains uh, outside the, the city centers in order to come to the next uh, target. But you could also go into city centers with the trains that are um, have that as a destination, but not all trains. So that's why both Oslo and Stockholm must be bypassed uh, because all trains are not going into Stockholm, all trains are not going into Oslo. 
and there will be a lot of, of places like that. So we have to place uh, to have a system that that works efficiently on this matter. If you look at St. Petersburg, there are four stations, uh, and you have the Sapshan from Moscow station, you have the Allegro from Finland station, but now uh, they suggest the Ladoga station as maybe the future connection between Moscow and, and, and Helsinki. And the Sapshan is uh, okay, but it's not too fast, but um, they are planning on upgrading the speed. Uh, and it's of course built on the Russian gauge. We could theoretically think to make a, a high-speed railway, uh, a Nordic high-speed ra railway, all the way to Moscow or Kazan with the European standard gauge, in addition to Sapsha. Maybe the Russians don't allow that or they don't want it, but this is something that could be discussed. Uh, all stations have to be without bottlenecks. So you could drive through all stations at the minimum 300 kilometers per hour, as they do in China. I have experienced this myself. It's absolutely no problem. Uh, in, in our country, they just laugh when you say it, but uh, it's, it's normal. I mean, so why don't we do it? But we don't build stations like this in Scandinavia. Uh, the Orlan connection is very crucial. Um, it's but it's only half half or if it's a 50 kilometers tunnel what that we need it could be maybe 60 kilometers depending on on how, how we plan it but it's uh, much shorter than between Helsinki and Tallinn about half of the distance and the, uh, the rest of it of the all on connection can be taken by uh, a lot of, of several bridges um, the distance is about the same as uh, between France and, and England. So, with new construction methods, we create faster and cheaper construction. It's actually cheaper to build on railway bridges than to build on land. Because the, the groundwork is, it takes half of the cost and sometimes even much more than maybe it, there come, come up a lot of problems on the ground and, and the projects are becoming very expensive. But with railway bridges, we can control the costs. We know the price. Uh, it takes very little uh, of the land in comparison and it's much more comfortable uh, travels also. So if we compare to China, Shanghai, Beijing is 1300 kilometers. It takes four hours and 24 in the fastest. Uh, connection. Stockholm St. Petersburg could be done by uh, two and a half hour and Oslo St. Petersburg four hours, 1200 kilometers. This is, it's nothing, it's, it's, um, it's not to invent the wheel again, it's, it's just to, to, to use the technology that is there. It, it's, it's not a problem. So why don't we do it? Um, because there are, is no good cooperation between government, financial sector, the industry, and this, you can say the market and civic society. But we have to put all these forces together in order to, to, to make it happen. Uh, how to finance this kind of project? The funding will be non-governmental. We cannot wait uh, for to, uh, until the states decide to, to do it uh, by the state budget. And the state budgeting is like bits and pieces. It's, they cannot go for these kind of big, big uh, investments. So we have to fund it outside the state budget. Uh, stakeholders will be private investors, pension funds, maybe and in cooperation with national, local, regional governments. 10 to 20% should be risk capital, 80-90% bank loan. We have been discussing with the Nordic Investment Bank and the European Investment Bank, and uh, uh, they are absolutely open for, for uh, further discussions about this. And, uh, and um, they say that minimum 10% risk capital is needed. The rest will be 
possible to get from the financial sector. And the good news is that there are, are no legal or big political obstacles so far. And there is a big enough market, so the railway is self-financing uh, from the customers because um, it is profitable enough to pay for the investment and for the operation. And the opportunity is then to make a cooperation between the Belt and Road, China, Russia, Finland, Sweden, Norway, and of course we could bring in the European Union uh, in this. Um, so that was my presentation. Um, you are free to contact me if you want to, let's say, keep in um, touch about this. Um, this project. Um, we are still at stage one. There are more steps to take in this ladder in order to, to implement the project, but um, we are working on it. Uh, so we will see. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johans Johansson. Uh, that was uh, very interesting uh, in terms of uh, what directions are possible. Uh, in terms of uh, train development, I think it's rather noteworthy if you compare uh, what you pointed out that the rail lines in Scandinavia are basically from 1850 to uh, or approximately to 1910, uh, more than 100 years ago. And as <clears throat> Mr. Askari pointed out, China built their railways <clears throat> from around 2008 or <clears throat> thereabouts uh, to modern systems uh, within the relatively short span <clears throat> of, of 10 to 12 years. So obviously this can be done. Uh, the question is, uh, do we have the will to make it happen? I, I'm just going to say that I think it was very useful and I'm very grateful that the uh, CEO from uh, SCOF was with us in the morning. Uh, my hope is that uh, in the future we will have these webinars uh, with other leading companies in Sweden who begin to recognize that the future is in cooperation. Uh, and I think these things can be, can be made to happen. Uh, there are still some questions about uh, which were raised, which I think we can continue uh, to have discussion on about financing. You raised that question in your presentation as well. I think these questions can be resolved, but there are some uh, important principles and points as to how it will be done. Uh, I would like to also welcome uh, Councillor Hong, who has joined us from the commercial section of the Embassy of China, uh, who has worked many years with companies here. Uh, you're very welcome, uh, Councillor Hong. Maybe you would like to uh, greet the a webinar with some words, if possible. We don't, we don't hear you. You have to unmute. Okay. Can you hear me? Now we hear you. Yes. yes. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, webinar. And uh, unfortunately, Ambassador has some engagement in the afternoon. So he asked me to join you and uh, I want to be a good listener. And also, I wish, uh, I wish to thank all the speakers for your excellent uh, presentations. It's very interesting and also shows uh, the interest from Nordic uh, countries about this uh, BRI initiative. I do believe there is a great potential for our future cooperation. Actually, this morning, I cannot, uh, uh, couldn't join the, the webinar because I have another web uh, meeting with uh, some Swedish friends in terms of uh, Echo cities. It also shows that uh, there are a lot of interest, common interest from 
China and uh, Sweden and also from other Nordic uh, countries in terms of cooperation. I do believe that uh, with our joint efforts, we can uh, facilitate and uh, enhancing this cooperation. And also from the embassy, from my office, we will always stand by to provide any uh, services as you need. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hong. Uh, you're very welcome. Glad you're with us. Uh, yes. And uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, uh, the next speaker uh, who will be joining us a bit uh, a bit later because of a engagement with uh, uh, the uh, her own webinar, Isabel uh, Hanush. Uh, she, uh, I'm sure, will will be joining us uh, probably within a short time, uh, half an hour. Uh, in the meantime, what I would uh, propose is that we can begin a kind of uh, preliminary Q&A. Uh, I 